Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kari and today I'm going to be talking about all things prize books. In particular today I'm going to be talking about books from the Women's Prize for Fiction and the International Booker. So this year I've read more prize books than I've ever read before so I thought it would be fun to do a little video talking about are prize books worth all the hype that they get? Are they worth getting so much attention in the book community? And I thought that the best way to do that is to go through all the prize books that I've read this year and rank them from worst to best and then kind of decide what's the overall feeling that these books give me. Do I feel like these books were worth reading because they were prize books? And can we trust book prizes when they say these are the best books of the entire year, these are the ones you should be reading? Can we really trust what they tell us? Before we get started, I would love to hear in the comments what is your history with prize books? Do you follow any particular book prizes? Do you ever challenge yourself to read the whole short list or to read the whole long list? Or how do you go about reading prize books? I would love to know in the comments. Definitely let me know. So in total, I'm going to be talking about 14 prize books mixed between the Women's Prize for Fiction and the International Booker. So from the Women's Prize for Fiction, I'm going to be talking about these eight books. Because as you may have seen on my channel, I did read the short list for the Women's Prize for fiction as well as some other books that didn't make it to the shortlist and I'll also be talking about these seven books from the international booker some of these are from the shortlist some just made the long list so like I said we're gonna rank these from my least favorite to my most favorite and I'm gonna give you my star ratings for each one and then at the end we'll kind of decide are prize books even worth reading are they even good just a little note before we get into the ranking there are two that I haven't finished yet so I'm gonna save those for the end so they're not gonna be a part of the ranking I'm gonna rank out of 12 and then at the very end of the ranking I'll talk about the two that I haven't quite finished yet. So my least favorite book that I read this year for prize list came from the Women's Prize for Fiction and that was Trespasses by Louise Kennedy. I gave this one two stars because it spiraled me into a reading slump. So as I said I was reading the entire shortlist for the Women's Prize for Fiction and this one just slowed me down so badly because I just I don't know, I did not connect with it at all. I felt like we didn't even know the characters very well, which I get into in my Women's Prize for Fiction video, so I'm gonna link you to that if you wanna hear my full thoughts on basically all of the Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist books. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because I'll just reference you to that video so that you can get my full thoughts. But basically, I felt like we didn't even know the characters very well. I didn't connect to the story at all. And like I said, I just found it really boring and it threw me into a huge reading slump. So out of all the prize books that I read this year, Trespasses was my least favorite with a two star. Number 11 from this list also comes from the Women's Prize for Fiction and it's Fire Rush by Jacqueline Crooks. Similarly to Trespasses, I gave this one two stars, but I did like this one a little bit more than Trespasses, even though I rated them both two stars. And the reason that I did enjoy this one a little bit more than Trespasses was because I ended up going to the audiobook because again, kind of like Trespasses, I just couldn't connect with this one. I wasn't finding it very engaging. And so I picked up the audiobook and the audiobook is actually pretty good. If you're interested in this one, I would really recommend the audiobook because there's like music and that kind of stuff mixed in because music is a big part of the story and I just really like the sound effects and the music and everything that they put into the audiobook which made it more interesting than I was finding it reading with my eyes but again I really just couldn't get into this story so it's coming in at number 11. Number 10 on this list is definitely the one that I was most surprised that I didn't love and it made me really sad actually and that's Maggie O'Farrell's The Marriage Portrait. When I heard this book pitched I thought I was going to love this book. Like really, I thought I was going to love it, but it was so boring. Again, I'll reference you to my Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist video if you want to hear my full thoughts on this, but I was just so disappointed. Seriously, I thought I was going to absolutely love this book and I did not. I found it so repetitive and I felt none of the tension. You were supposed to be feeling so much tension. I felt none of it. And also this is a very long book to have to sludge through when there's no tension and you were promised tension. And I ended up rating this one also two stars, but I did put it above Trespasses and Fire Rush because there were a few moments that I did enjoy and like the promise of what this could have been also gave it a little bit of boost but I mean especially the beginning I guess I really mostly enjoyed the beginning but then it was all downhill from there number nine on my list is Black Butterflies by Priscilla Morris I gave this one 2.75 stars because even though I didn't feel like I was engaged throughout the whole story I was a bit torn up by the ending and what happens to some of the characters at the end and so clearly that has to say something about the story but while I was going through the beginning and middle parts of the story 
categories, I didn't feel like I cared. And so that's what's making me rate it so low because I didn't care at the beginning, even though I cared a little bit more at the end. Now, it's not to say that I love the ending or anything like that. Clearly, I mean, I still rated this 2.75 stars. It's just that I did care a little bit at the end. So I rated this 2.75 stars. Again, for more details on this, check out that Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist video. Number eight on my list is Pod by Laleen Paul. This one was also on the Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist. This was kind of the wild card in the shortlist for the Women's Prize this year. And I actually think I enjoyed it more than a lot of people did, but that doesn't mean that I really enjoyed it. I gave this one three stars. As opposed to the books we've already talked about, those ones I really didn't care about like getting to the end of the book. I wasn't dying to see what was gonna happen. But for this one, I did care a little bit more about what was going to happen and how it was all going to resolve. And I did enjoy some of the characters in this book. The characters are animals. And so that boosted the rating a little bit for me. But I do think that I enjoyed this more than a lot of other people did. I think some people had a really visceral reaction to this book and hated it. The next book on my list is the first international booker book on this list. This is The Birthday Party by Laurent Mauvigny, translated from the French by Daniel Levin Becker. So I didn't do a dedicated video about the international booker books that I read, so I will give you a little bit of a summary for these international booker books. Basically, this one takes place kind of in the middle of nowhere in France at a little hamlet where in one of the houses, a husband and wife live with their daughter and at one of the other hamlets, there's this older single woman, but they're looking for someone to live in the third and final house in the hamlet. And this whole story takes place over 24 or 48 hours. I don't really remember, but it's a very short period of time. And we follow every little detail of this day leading up to something nefarious that we know is going to take place. And this nefarious thing that's going to be taking place, we start to realize that it's going to take place at this birthday party at the end of the day. I did really enjoy this book, but at times I found it just too long. I mean, this book, it's almost 500 pages, and I don't think that it merited those 500 pages. So while I did enjoy the story itself, it was just a little bit too long, and I ended up giving this 3.75 stars. Number six on the list is a Women's Prize for Fiction long list book, and that's I'm a Fan by Sheena Patel. This one's about social media and about a woman who gets obsessed with following this woman on Instagram and about this toxic relationship that she has with her partner because he's cheating on his wife to be with her, but also be with somebody else. It's like this tangled mess, and how she starts to stalk these other women on Instagram and just kind of the hold that social media has over her. And this is actually written in vignettes, so that's really interesting. I don't really read too many things in vignettes, so that was really fun to do. And I just thought this was a really interesting commentary on social media and obsession and the things that social media can do to us and the power that it holds over us. And I rated this one four stars. I did really enjoy this one. Next is another book that's from the Women's Prize for Fiction long list, and that's Children of Paradise by Camilla Grudova. This one follows a young woman who's working at an old cinema and all the different people she works with who are just characters like they're so bizarre and just following her trying to fit in with these people and all the different weird things that happen to her at the cinema and some of the descriptions in this are just so visceral like I could still picture some of the things that are described in this book like it's really stuck with me some parts of this and so I did really enjoy this one I gave this one four stars number four on my list is Standing Heavy by Gauze and this was translated from the French by Frank Wynne so this is one of the books that made the shortlist for the internet National Booker and I think people were super divided on it. People really did not like this one, but personally, I really enjoyed it. Basically, it's from the perspective of three different security guards in three different time periods in France, and it really looks into the immigrant experience in France. And while my experience as an immigrant in France is extremely different than the one experienced by these immigrants, I still found things that I connected to because they really go into depth about some of the attitudes that French people have about certain things and just about French daily life in general. And I I just thought it was really fun to see France through the eyes of another immigrant experience. Even though, like I said, it, they are completely different experiences than the one that I've had personally. But also certain parts are just really funny. Because for example, one of the security guards that we're following is a security guard in the Sephora on the Champs-Elysees in the 2010s. And it's just so funny. Like I've been to that Sephora so many times. And so just picturing the security guard of that Sephora, like thinking these things that are in this book, like it's really funny. Some of the things are really sad too, but some of them are really funny. Of course, I've always had respect for security guards, but now after reading this book, whenever I go into these shops and I see these security guards working, like I have so much more respect for them. Like even more, this book made me think about so many things I had never considered before. And so I just have so much more respect for them than I already did. But also this book made me wonder, what are they thinking about me? <laughs> 
Like I said, this book was super divisive, but I really enjoyed it. Number three on my list is another international booker book, and it's Is Mother Dead by Vigdis Hjorth. And this one is translated from the Norwegian by Charlotte Barsland. This book is about a really bad relationship that this grown woman has with her mother, and kind of how she starts to spiral out of control because of this bad relationship that she has. And I just found it so fascinating and really interesting to be in this woman's head to see what she's thinking. And I gave this one four stars as well because I really, really enjoyed it. And while I think some people found it a little bit bizarre, I really thought it was a good book. I thought it was really fascinating. Book number two on this list is Boulder by Ava Balthazar, translated from the Spanish by Julia Sanchez. And this one's also from the International Booker. This one follows a woman who's a chef on boats. And so she's always on the go. She's always traveling. She's always on a different boat working. But then once she settles down with a partner, we start to see how being in one place affects her, but also how her partner's desire for a baby changes their entire relationship and her own mental state, basically. So if you like stories about reluctant motherhood, this is a really good one. And also it's really short. It really packs a lot into a few pages. And I rated this one 4.25 stars. All right, number one on this list will be obvious to anyone who's seen a few of my videos on my channel, but it's still born by Guadalupe Natal. And this was translated from the Spanish by Rosalind Harvey. So if you want more details about this book, I've actually gone into detail about this book twice on my channel. In the first one, it was my favorite literary fiction books video. And also I just recently did an underrated books video where I talk about this one. So if you've seen those videos, it should be no surprise that this is my most favorite prize book that I read this year. And this is the only book that I gave five stars on this list. So the two prize books that I've started and haven't finished yet are Whale by Chion Myung Kwan, translated from the Korean by Chi Young Kim. And this was for the International Booker. And yeah, Yes. <laughs> Shame. Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver for the Women's Prize for Fiction, which went on to win the Women's Prize for Fiction. So as I said in my Women's Prize for Fiction video, I didn't have enough time to finish this book by the time the winner was announced and I was going to go back to it, but I was in such a reading slump after reading those books that I didn't like, uh, Trespasses, Fire Rush, all those books, that the idea of going back to such a big book was just like not an option. And so I was reading some other things and I just haven't gotten back to it. But what I have read so far of this, I've absolutely absolutely loved. So I'm going to put this into the category of books that I have enjoyed because of what I've read so far, I've loved it. Same thing for Whale. I wasn't able to finish reading this by the time the winner for the International Booker was announced, but what I have read, I've really enjoyed and I do want to get back to this book. So again, for Whale, I'm going to put this in the category of books that I did enjoy. So those are the 14 prize books that I'm going to be using to help me decide are prize books even good? Are they worth reading? Now you may have noticed a trend while I was going through these books that the bottom five books were all from the Women's Prize for Fiction. Personally, that did not go unnoticed for me. And then on the other hand, my top four books were all from the International Booker. So it wasn't even like it was like one and then the other, one and then the other. No, it was very clear to me that one prize was giving me books that I appreciated more than the other. Now I've been following the Women's Prize for Fiction for a good few years now, and I have found some of my favorite books that I've ever read thanks to the Women's Prize for Fiction. Particularly, I'm thinking Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason and Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. Those two books, especially Sorrow and Bliss, those are some of my favorite books of all time and I never would have read them without the Women's Prize for Fiction. So I'm not trying to like bash the Women's Prize or anything because they have given me so much and just, just those two books alone. But this year in particular, I did not enjoy the books from the Women's Prize for Fiction, except for Demon Copperhead, but I haven't even finished it yet. On the other hand, I had an excellent track record with the International Booker. And actually this was the first year that I ever followed the International Booker. And look how much success I had. So I'm really taking this into account when I'm thinking about my reading goals for next year because it was one of my reading goals for this year to read the Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist. And because of the results of this list, I'm really gonna have to make a decision if I'm going to continue reading so many books from the Women's Prize for Fiction because most of those books just weren't for me. On the other hand, the International Booker books, which I did not plan to read, it was completely spur of the moment. I was influenced by watching YouTube to even pick up one book from the International Booker. And then I just kept picking up one more, one more, one more to where I ended up reading five of the international books completely unplanned. So with all that being said, can we answer our prize books even good? Are they worth reading? Well, 
In my personal experience, just from this year, I had way more luck with the International Booker books this year, and I'm gonna take that information into next year when I decide what prize books am I going to read next year. So like I said before, let me know in the comments below, what is your history with prize books? Do you usually enjoy prize books? Do you usually not really connect with prize books? Which prize books do you like to read? You know, maybe you follow the Booker or the Pulitzer or any of the other wonderful book prizes that are out there. Let me know in the comments, what's your history with prize books? If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like. It's a really easy way to support me and my channel. And subscribe if you haven't already because I would love to have you back. And I'll talk to you again next time. Bye!